the leader of Change Congress. His name is Adam Green. He's been back on the show before. Adam, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Uh, all right. Now, uh, you guys went after Ben Nelson, who's a Democrat in Nebraska. Uh, tell me why you went after him and how you went after him. Well, Change Congress is a group that's dedicated to breaking the link between special interest influence um, and results in Washington. So we saw that Ben Nelson at that time, earlier last month, was the only Democrat in the Senate on record opposing President Obama's public option. And he had taken over $2 million in contributions from the health and insurance industries. Well, that's got to be a coincidence, Adam. Totally coincidence. Because, <laughs> um, you know, $2 million can't buy anything in Nebraska. So, um, yeah, so basically we took out a series of online ads, about $10,000 worth across Nebraska, which actually does go a far, a far way, and sent direct mail pieces to thousands of Democratic donors in Nebraska uh, pointing out this potential conflict, uh, conflict of interest. And uh, what was the result of that? Well, it was really interesting. It ended up being like an 11-day saga. At first, his uh, local spokesperson issued like a nine-paragraph rant. He called it a press release, but essentially it was him writing in his own words with quotes around it, trying to debunk what we were saying. In the course of that press release, he denied that there was such a thing as a public option, that Barack Obama ever supported a public option. It was kind of amateur. Um, and then word started leaking that um, Ben Nelson was open to the public option. That was about three or four days into this 11-day saga. And then a local reporter sat down with him and got him to say on the record, I'm open to any plan. But then the next paragraph said, oh, except Nelson said that he is not open to giving people a choice between a government plan and private plans which essentially, you know, is not him being open to any plan. So we kept the pressure up and eventually kind of nailed him down where he kind of firmly said for the record that he is now open to the public option. And even at the end of the 11-day saga said that he will not join a filibuster of any public option. So we essentially went from a guy who initially called this a deal breaker to saying he's open to it and that he will not join a Republican filibuster. Uh, let me ask two questions related to that, Adam. One is... Um do you think that these guys care about, I'm, now I'm asking you a personal question here, do you think they care about policy at all, or do you think a guy's taking $2 million from the health industry, he knows the public option uh, is going to be uh, problematic for them because they can't compete with it because they're so bloated and they charge us too much money. Uh, and so he thinks, uh, look, I get my money from these guys, I'm just going to uh, protect their ass. Or do, does he in his own mind convince himself, oh, no, no, the public option would be bad for reasons that he can't even articulate yeah it's a good question you know lawrence lessig who is the founder of change congress has a term he calls it good souls corruption where he essentially will allow for the fact that they in their heart are good people but essentially says that they are part of a fundamentally corrupt campaign finance system which is what change congress is there to you know work against and you know my, my guess is that folks who have been in dc forever partly are just out of touch they have no idea how these issues affect real people. So it's easy for them to make the wrong judgment if pushed in the wrong direction. And then, you know, you've addressed this on your show over and over again. These guys are just scared. You know, you know they're, they're creatures of fear. And the idea that big industry would come after you is enough to kind of make one see their point of view a little bit more positively. You know, when we were contemplating this campaign, we reached out to over a dozen progressive groups on the ground in Nebraska. And one thing that I found to be really shocking was the, w their universal approach to dealing with Ben Nelson was kill him with kindness. Just show him how much you love him. And, you know, he'll do the right thing in the end. And we're really lucky to have him in there. And, I, and that to me was incredible. And what we showed was that, you know, with something as simple as $10,000 worth of ads, which really is not that much, and a few thousand dollars worth of direct mail, we could intensify pressure on a politician enough to get him to change his ways. So um, I think that's the model that we have to replicate in the future, calling them out and applying real pressure. I, I couldn't agree more with that, but I, I want to ask one more specific question about that. And by the way, uh, the website for anybody who wants to find out more is change-congress.org, change-congress.org. Uh, Adam, uh, what do you think was the key part of that? What, I mean, for someone to change their position when uh, the industry and the lobbyists are giving them $2 million, or at least be open to changing that position, I would have thought would take a lot. What do you think was the, the thing that really put the fear of God in them? Well, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so if they are creatures of fear, um, they fear short-term pain, too. So I think what actually did the trick was us running a pretty 
smart media strategy. You know, I don't think the online ads alone or the mail pieces alone did it, but we instantly, on day number one, got the local Associated Press to cover it, and you know, by day number two or three, both major dailies, daily papers in the state to cover it. Uh, the Huffington Post, Ryan Grimm, deserves a great uh, hat tip just because he was consistently calling Ben Nelson, calling him, getting him, him to give comments every step of the way. And at one point, towards the end, Ryan Grimm had a story that actually wasn't that bad for Ben Nelson. It was when he was finally coming out and saying he was open to it. Ben Nelson apparently personally read the story, got freaked out that you know a little paragraph or so was not very favorable to him, personally called up Ryan Grimm and started by saying, oh, I've been reading your blog, and I just want to clarify some things, giving Ryan Grimm yet another story and allowing Ryan Grimm to get him even more on the record, saying that he's open to the public option. So I think he's just, you know, he's protective of his image, and when somebody's actually able to, you know, penetrate publicly, not just have a few phone calls go to his office, but actually expose him publicly through the media, he freaked out. Uh, now, uh, there are a couple of other Democratic senators you have to flip over uh, to considering the public option for us to have real change in health care reform. One of them is Senator Mary Landrieu uh, in Louisiana. Is she next? She is next. We actually um, just launched a new campaign against her today exactly modeled off of our Nelson campaign. Um, we took a poll of our members. It wasn't actually a poll. It was asking for comment. Who should we target next? A lot of people said Landrew. Uh, over 300 people chipped in to help us replicate our campaign, and today we essentially put up ads saying that she has raised $1.6 million from the same exact interests that Ben Nelson did. And just last week, she went from previously signing a pledge supporting the public option to saying that she is not open to it. Now, once again, these politicians are creatures of fear. So, again, her exact quote last week was, uh, let me get it out, no, I am not open to it. I'm not open to a public option. Today, after just the announcement of these online ads, she said, it, it would be unlikely, but I'm not saying no, 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 she told uh, Huffington Post. <laughs> All <laughs> so, right. I, I can see the swing already. Uh, yeah. well, now we've got to knock those uh, three no's down to one no <laughs> and then work it from there. So, uh, you know, again, what do you think is going to be the thing that gets it for her? Do you think that it's the public exposure uh, or are you guys going to try to send mailers to her constituents? Uh, how are you going to apply the pressure in Louisiana? Well, it's the same basic blueprint. So today, once again, uh, we were very fortunate to get the local Associated Press to cover it. That's now been um, reprinted in a lot of the major papers across the state and some TV websites across the state. So she's already feeling it. Um, you know, the ads will go on, the online ads will go on for about a week. But what we announced today was if she does not essentially cave in um, a couple days, we will then send thousands of mail pieces to her donors. And if that still doesn't get her to go our way, uh, we're going to have a TV ad. We're actually partnering with Democracy for America on this, and they, you know, uh, an ad is already being contemplated and will soon be produced featuring some local voices calling her out on her special interest contributions. And um, essentially DFA has a million-person email list that they can fundraise off of. So we, we're going to escalate up. This is a good kind of escalation. Right, and uh, Democracy for America is the dean group, Howard Dean and, and Jim Dean. Uh, and so it's good that uh, we're getting down to brass knuckles here. So real quick, Adam, a final question for you. She swung before. You know, she said that she was in favor of the public option before. Do you think she was just saying that uh, for to cover her ass with progressives and didn't think it was really going to come up, and now that it's coming up for a vote, she has to go answer the people who pay her, uh, the lobbyists? Is, do you think that's what caused the swing in the first place? I'm not sure. I mean, I, she strikes me as a somewhat confused person in general. Um, and she might have done it to cover her ass. She might have also just done it because she didn't fully understand that she was making a concrete pledge. But the fact that she was asked by the Huffington Post last week, um, you know, in her own words, what her position was, and her default was to say, no, I'm not open to it, and her default was to defend private insurance companies. Um, that's the All problem. Right. And All we right. need to show her that that's a problem for her constituents as well. All right. The website is change-congress.org. Adam Reed, thanks for being with us.